At the end of the year, approximately 5% of your paper one will be based on a section known as probability. And 5% of the marks from paper two will also be based on probability. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to start looking at this whole concept of probability. So let's get it straight to it because we don't have much time. Many things in life can't be predicted with certainty. The best we can say is how likely they are to happen using the idea of probability. Probability helps us interpret information in as many real life situations such as risk analysis in a business, games of chance such as cards, dice and gambling, weather forecasts, risks of felt fires and lightning. In all of the above situations, people use probability to decide how likely it is that something will happen. A probability can be described as a fraction, a decimal, or a percentage. The probability of any event is given a number between zero, which means it's impossible, it's not going to happen, and one. A certainty it's definitely going to happen let's consider the following the chance of the Sun setting tonight but what is the chance the Sun is going to set tonight it's definitely going to set okay if not we're gonna stay awake for a very 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 long time right the Sun is gonna set what's the probability of that happening there's a hundred percent chance of that happening no discussion number two the chance of pigs flying tomorrow. Can pigs fly? Will pigs ever fly? Pigs can't fly. So the probability of us waking up tomorrow and seeing pigs flying overhead is zero. Not going to happen. So our probability scale ranges from zero to one. In other words, from the position of something never going to happen, impossible to happen, to a position of it's definitely going to happen. What is the chance of a coin landing on heads? So if I got a coin and I flip it, catch it, toss it, what's the chance it's going to be a heads? Well, there are only two sides to a coin, aren't there? There's a heads or a tail. And so if it lands on a head, you got a 50-50 chance of actually um, it landing on a head. All right, here's a great game to play with someone. When you take a coin and you flick it, we say to them, okay, right, let's flip a coin for this. Heads, I win, tails, you lose. Give that some thought, okay? So heads, you're going to win, tails, he's going to lose, so you're going to win anyway. Remember that the next time you've got to flick a coin for something. Right, next thing. We've been told that uh, 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 probability can be written as percentages, fractions, and decimal fractions. Let's have a look here. Okay, we know what a fraction is, don't we, folk? A fraction is something over something. Like we've got here, we've got a half here, and we've got three quarters here. And we know what a decimal is as well. It's naught comma something. Right, so a percentage. Zero percent is what as a fraction? As a fraction, guys, it's zero, hey? As a decimal fraction, it's zero. Zero is zero. What is a hundred percent? 100% as a fraction is 1 over 1, also known as 1. As a decimal, it is also 1. Okay, so we said our lowest probability is 0, our highest is 100%. In other words, guys, all probabilities between 0 and 1 in the form of a decimal fraction. Let's have a look at a half. As a half, how do we convert half to a percent? Well, we multiply by 100, don't we? We say I've got a half, multiply that by 100, and I'm going to land up with 50%. So I've got 50%. Writing it as a decimal, I've got a half, which is the same as saying 1 divided by 2. And 1 divided by 2 is 0, 0,5. So we got an answer here of 0, 0,5. What is 0, 0,75? Well, let's change it to a percent. 0, 0,75 multiplied by 100, I'm going to get 75%. So that is 
percent. What's it as a fraction? Well, 0, 0,75 we know is 75 over 100. But we need to simplify. Remember, always simplify your fractions. So 75 over 100, we got to say what goes into 75 and what goes into 100. Well, guys, the exciting thing is if you have a calculator like this, you can actually say, right, 75 fraction button 100, push equals, and it simplifies it for you. Can you see that? 3 over 4. So 75 over 100 is 3 over 4. Or you could say, what goes into 75, what goes into 100? And 25 goes into both. So 0, 0,75 is the same thing as saying 3 over 4. 3 over 4, change that to a percentage. Well, 3 over 4 times 100 is going to give me 75%. So again, I've got 75%. Ah, can you see? Yeah, it's the exact same thing. 3,4 as a decimal is the same thing as saying 3 divided by 4. And if you do that on your calculator and you say 3 divided by 4 equals, it gives you an answer of 0, 0,75. Can you see? This is quite nice because what we've done is we've worked from a decimal fraction to the other ways of writing um, probability. And here we've worked from fraction to the other ways of writing probability. 0, 0,85 as a percentage, 0, 0,85 times 100 is going to give us 85%. 0, 0,85, I go 85 over 100 and I simplify it. Or I use my calculator to simplify that for me. I've got 85 over 100 and I push equals and it gives me 17 over 20. Okay, so guys, remember to write probability, we can do it as a percentage, a fraction, or a decimal fraction. Right, now, write down the chances of getting the outcomes in the following situations. What's the probability of getting any odd number when throwing a dice once? Okay, is it a die, is it a dice? Right, one dice, two die. So, any odd number. When I throw a dice, I now have got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Odd numbers, odd are 1, odd are 3, odd are 5. Now, probability, we're saying how many possible outcomes are there? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 possible outcomes. How many of those outcomes are odd numbers? 1, 2, 3. Three. So if you got three and six chances of getting an odd number when you throw a dice. We simplify that. Three over six, the same as one over two. What's the probability of getting a three when throwing with a dice with eight faces? Oh, that's something you don't get very often or see very often, is a dice with eight faces. So instead of having the numbers... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, they've got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I've got 8 possibilities when I throw a dice. How many 3's do I have? People, I've got 1, 3. So I've got 1 in 8 chances. So many people say it's 3 and 8. They're not 3 3's, there's only 1 3. So I've only got 1 in 8 chances. Okay. What's the chance that the arrow of the spinner lands on a color randomly when you spin it? Okay, what are the chances of it landing on red? What spinner are they talking about? They're speaking about this one. Now, how many parts are there? There's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five sectors. How many are red? Two. So there's a two in five chances of landing on our red. Okay, then this is a nice one. You take out a t-shirt without looking from a pile which has one blue, three green, and two purple t-shirts in it. What are the chances of taking out a purple t-shirt? This sounds like my son in the morning. Okay, come boy, we go. Sleeps to the very last minute as the car's turned on. He thinks, gee, I better get up. Runs, grabs his, uh, puts his hand in his cupboard, grabs the first shirt and runs out. In this case, we got one blue, three green, and two purple. How many shirts does he have? 
One plus three is four, plus two, he's got six shirts. How many are purple? We've got two purple. So he's got two and six chances of grabbing a purple shirt. Simplify it. One over three. Okay, let's take it a step further. You roll a die or dice. What is the probability of getting a four? Guys, again, how many fours are there? There's one four. How many sides to a dice? Six. So you got one in six chance of rolling a four. An even number, how many even numbers are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's two, four, and six. You got three in six chances or one in two chances. A four or a five, how many fours or fives are there? Okay, there's one four and one five. So that makes two chances out of six. Simplify one out of three. If I roll a six-sided dice, what's the chance of getting a seven? Folk, zero. You can sit and roll the dice and roll the dice and roll the dice and roll the dice and roll. You're never going to get a seven because there's no seven on that dice. Okay, we're going to take it a step further. And what I want to do with you now is look at something called and and or. Okay, and when I see the word and, I know I'm talking about multiplication. When I see the word or, I know I'm talking about addition. What am I talking about actually? Let's have a look here. A bag contains five green balls, two blue balls, and one white ball. A ball is drawn from the bag and not put back into the bag. A second ball is taken from the bag. What's the probability of taking out a green ball and then a blue ball? Okay, so we want a green and a blue. Right, so how many balls are in the bag? We got five, six, seven, eight balls in the bag. So I have eight balls in the bag. How many are green? Five. So I got five in eight chances of taking out a green. Then the green is gone. Now I take another one. I try to get a blue ball. How many blue balls are there? There are two. How many balls in the bag? Now remember people, we took a green one out. We did have eight. One is gone. We've now got seven green, uh, seven balls in total in the bag. The word and means what? It means times. Can you see? I've now got a sum. Five over eight times two over seven. And we do that straight on our calculator. Five over eight multiplied by two over seven. And we're going to land up then with an answer of 5 over 28. So you got 5 and 28 chances of getting a green ball and then a blue ball. Okay, so let's have a look here. Um, right, I'm jumping to this one because we don't have very much time. Either a white ball and a green ball or a white ball and a blue ball. So I want a white and a green or I want a white and a blue. Remember, we're not putting the balls back. So white, we had one in eight chances. When I've taken a ball out, I've got seven left. And how many green balls did we have? We had uh, five green balls. Then five green balls. White ball, one in eight. And how many blue balls did we have? We had uh, two. And two, but it'll be out of seven. All means plus, and means times. And then we quickly multiply. I'm going to get five out of 56, and two out of 56. We add that up, and I'm going to get seven over 56, also known as one over eight when I simplify it. So and and all can get quite exciting stuff. All right. Folk, our time is up. I trust you've learned a little bit more about probability. We're going to see each other again on the screen. We're going to learn a lot more. Until then, look after yourself. 
and learn hard. Chat soon.